social distance, you say, bring the staff into play. From walking stick to weapon, it takes just a second to keep your opponent at bay. Oh, hello again! Lauren back with a new video. Today we're going to talk about the staff, also called the quarter staff. It's pretty cold outside in Calgary. Um, but we're indoors, we're safe, and we're gonna work up a bit of a sweat as we talk about Sweatnam. What? Well, Joseph Sweatnam has an early 17th century treatise on fighting with the staff. So today, English staff is what we're going to look at. There are other types of staff that you can fight with. Um, there are other systems. There are some German ones, Portuguese. And of course, you're probably familiar with a whole bunch of Eastern uh, martial arts, but we're talking about European martial arts, and we are talking about the quarter staff. Now, why is it called a quarter staff sometimes? Well, it seems to be a reference from the 16th century onward. So, for most of what I study, it's just a staff. But it could be because you take your log, you quarter it, and then use the quarter to shape into the staff. That is one explanation that I've heard and researched and found. Could also be that you hold it in the first quarter because when we talk about this staff, we're not doing this. We are not kayaking. Kayaking is great. This is not. I fight well with the staff. This is good. So what we do for our early 17th century, which I mean, it's going to be a staff from the 16th century as well. These things progress. But if we're talking Swetnam, a horrible person, but <laughs> a useful staff fighting system. One hand goes right down at the butt of the, of the staff here, and one, I think it says one to one and a half feet up. Right leg goes forward. Left foot, kind of 45, 50 degrees. There you go. Knees a little bent. The staff towards the opponent's face. You want it out in front of you, but you also want the point up so that it protects your head. So you don't want to have it too low. You want it up. And this is your basic stance, and this is what's called a low guard because your hands are low. The other guard is the high guard because your hands are high. Very important with the high guard, both eyes look out over the staff, so if you pulled it in to your face, you would see over it. But let's just start talking about the low guard and what the staff system from Swetnam does is it focuses on the thrust. It says the thrust is the best way to fight with this and it really is because you have lots of reach. So the first thing we'll look at is just how much reach. Well. I can obviously reach the camera without much work. I can hit the camera and knock it off of the computer if I really wanted to. But there are different ways to thrust. You can thrust with your hands staying where they are. You can thrust by pushing, bringing your hands together. And then you can thrust by letting go, stepping and extending the arm. And now I'm well past the camera. Woo! There we go. <laughs> So you have a lot of options. Now, this is a really good defensive position. So if someone is swinging anything at you, you can walk, you snap. And again, remember when we were talking about our uh, longsword videos, we do a push-pull. And that's the ideal here. If you're like this with your staff, you can not You can do a little bit of a push-pull, but this really gives you that push-pull and you have some nice distance between you and the opponent. And you keep your opponent at a distance. If your opponent has a staff, then you're matched. Maybe they all have other weapons which are mentioned in the treaties. Um, talking about uh, forest glaive, bills, halberds, other weapons of the time. But as against something shorter, even like a sword, well, if someone had a sword and you had a staff and it's a lot longer, you can knock sword out of the way, thrust, recover. You can also be in this position, if someone's attacking low, up. And we have striking motions, 
These are not what are preferred in the treaties, but you could do a striking motion with the staff from here. And we'll have other treaties that do talk about being able to snap your attack at your opponent. But you can fake and then disengage and thrust. So it can be quite sneaky. And all it is is a piece of wood. And so a simple stick, often overlooked. Oh, it's a staff. So, oh, that's what the wizard gets to carry. Oh, it's, it's simple. Oh, it doesn't do much damage. Oh, it's not very powerful. It is extremely powerful. It really does. An amazing thing with the thrust. And I keep doing it because it's just so much fun just to thrust with the staff. Now, if you're defending this side, so someone's attacking their right hand and attacking from their strong, great. But if someone's attacking from the other side, I don't do that. That's awkward. I have to switch my guard. So there's a lot of practice in switching guards, and this is what the system promotes. So hand slides up, hand slides over, and then as you're almost done, you switch your feet. And now I'm strong from left to right because I'm doing my push-pull with my left hand to the right hand. So it really is an ambidextrous kind of system. You do learn. Whoop. We're bound to hit the ceiling a few times, so I'm using the full-length staff. I have a shorter broom handle, but it's just not as the same. I can't really show you the reach, the power, the angle if I'm using the broom handle. I want to use the real staff. So it is six feet, 1.8 meters for this. Um, if we looked at George Silver, he would recommend a staff that would probably be eight, nine feet tall. It would be too tall to fit in the spare room here. So that's why I'm focusing on Sweatnam for this video. And again, there we go. There's our guard. There's our thrust. We step forward and we can extend. And we can go with one hand and really get some good reach. So it really gives you options. Now, from the high guard, I'm defending against low attacks. And this is especially, I mentioned it's a good guard for if you're encountering someone in the dark. So at night, if you're traveling, if you're walking stick like this to attack, because you're fairly well covered. And when you do your high guard, you notice this hand is above my head. The staff is out in front and it's pretty much covering my body so that I've got lots of room to provide defense. So that's important. But switching the guard while you're in your high guard from one side to the other is a little trickier. There are three or four different ways that we figured out at our Calgary Fellowship of the Sword. Um, and this is what we were studying before our most recent um, suspension of sports and the lockdown took place here in Alberta. So I like, you can thrust it out. You can turn it over. There are a few other ways that you can do this, but I can't do them in the room because I will hit the ceiling. But having the staff kind of fly out, switching your hands, and I'm not going just one hand on the staff, I'm keeping both hands on. So you notice that when I'm doing a lower guard, I'm bringing one hand up, sliding the other over, and then my feet finally move the last part. And there we go. So I'm not losing control of the staff. I could do big hand motions, but it's actually gonna be a little quicker and it's more stable. If I'm a little slow and someone hits and I've got both hands there, I maintain control of the staff. If one hand is off and I get hit, the staff's going to drop to the side. Remember, the balance point of your staff is out in the middle. Unlike a sword, where the balance is towards one end, it's near your guard, and then you can be quite nimble and fast with the blade. This is still fast because it's fairly light, but your balance is out. So you want two hands at all times, as best as you can on the staff, except for that odd time when you really need to cover that distance and you want to do that single hand thrust. But that's a move that you're not going to open with a single hand thrust. 
unless your opponent is really distracted by something. Yeah. But anyway, those are the basics of this system. And we work on a whole bunch of drills and moves and we really, we're getting into quite the groove. We're really starting to get the hang of it. We just took the treaties, did our own research. Um, Chris was our lead instructor on that. Shout out to him. Probably, I don't even know if you'll see the video, but doing a great job leading the class. I'm helping him out. And uh, yeah, hopefully we'll get back to that soon. But anyway, this is just some English staff. A lot of thrusting, really good at covering for defense. And it hopefully gives you a little insight into just how a simple piece of wood, this stick here, can be a quite effective weapon. It can be quite dangerous. Now imagine putting a spear point on it. And we know from George Silver that he's got little, even just a little metal ferrule, a little spike on the end of the staff. That's what he recommends with a much longer staff. But imagine a spear. With these techniques, they apply to thrusting weapons of all sorts. And you've got the reach, you can maintain the distance, you've got power, everything. And all you have is a simple six foot piece of wood. Pretty impressive for a quarter of a log. <laughs> oh, and uh, a special shout out. Hopefully the intro music has worked. Uh, Ryan, AKA the Simmer Laugh Gray, hope I said it right, um, made some theme music for me. So uh, I really appreciate that. I really like it. And hopefully little tidbits of that will help to um, expand the atmosphere of our videos and bring more entertainment to you. And speaking of which, remember, like the video, subscribe and hit the notification bell. You don't want to miss the videos. That's very important. And thank you very much for watching and support almost at 200 uh, subscribers on the channel. So we are growing and growing fairly well. And hopefully we will uh, keep climbing 500, 1,000. I'm sure we're going to get there soon. Anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you have a fantastic day. And remember, when life gets it down, stick it to it.